While the FTSE All Share AIM Index is not too far away from the highs that we've seen in 2021, one of the big statistics I think going into the back of the year has come through from the small cap specialist uh, UHY Hacker Young. It says that trading levels um, are at record highs on AIM with people looking for accelerated growth potential. And fundraising is at a 14-year high. So that's the performance going into the back end of this year. Let's take a look now at how things are looking as we go into 2022 uh, with a portfolio fund manager specializing in AIM stocks and IHT stocks, particularly Chris Boxall from Fundamental Asset Management. Chris, welcome. I can't believe we're at the end of another year, but what a year it's been. How do you appraise what we've seen in 2021 before we take a look through into next year? I think that stat you mentioned is really interesting, growing popularity of AIM uh, among institutional and retail uh, investors. And we've seen liquidity improve greatly. I mean, average daily value traded it, it was 399 million. And people always thought of this AIM as a, a very small market, small companies, liquidity was, was an issue. You couldn't, you could get it tough to get out of stocks, but you can see it's been very, very, very active, which is, which is great. And fundraising as well. Fundraising in uh, in 21 has been terrific. Uh, highest for as you mentioned, 14 years, 7.9 billion, both both IPOs and secondary. There's been a lot of secondary activity, which shows that institutions have been very keen to support support companies. And 7.9 billion raised is, is really really very encouraging. It's become a market now where institution big institutional managers no longer sort of fear to tread. They were, they were a bit reluctant to come into AIM, but that, that's really changed. And also you've got some very active retail investor interest. So it's so, so pretty good, pretty good. I mean, the AIM index itself, just looking at the numbers, up only 4% year to date, circa 4%, all share has outperformed it. But remember that came, comes off a very, very strong 2020 when AIM performed exceptionally well. That was that huge performance in 2020 when the index was up circa 24% and the main market was down um, circa three and a bit, 4%. So, you, you know, coming off a, a very big year, it was bound to cool off a bit. And some of the cooling off we've seen back in 20, we, 2020, we saw strong performance for online retailers. O online was was big. Everybody wanted a piece of online. One, I mean, two of the prime examples, one was, was ASOS. ASOS was a... Uh, a very a big performer, uh, and you can see there that the, the shares have come off a lot. That they sold off initially in lockdown, and everybody realised this was going to be a lockdown winner. And then everybody's online, and now you've had this online sort of further dying out, where people have come back into the shops. But and, and ASOS ironically looks reasonable value. It, it always looks very very punchy. But now this is a proper business. That has demonstrated delivery over a number of years, and I think it, it, I think it actually looks look, looks quite interesting. A another one which has followed a similar path to ASOS is Boohoo Group. Clearly, Boohoo has had its own controversies uh, around um, you know working standards. You know, you've got a sweatshop kind of accusations from some of its Leicester suppliers. But but it's had a, a similar path, very popular over lockdown. But you've seen you've seen the interest wane. Again, it's quite interest. Both ASOS and Boohoo have bought some big brands, so they look they look pretty interesting. But another stock that I think really highlights what's been going on this year is a, a newer issue from June, Victorian Plumbing, which happens to have announced um, you know, this week. And Victorian Plumbing, we've seen how it's a business that were that listed when everybody loved online retailers and has really fallen off dramatically you you saw founders take a huge amount of money out of an ipo um 240 odd million uh including about 200 million odd for the, the ceo and founder and clearly the, the world you know it's a it's a nice business but we, we observed the rating looked very rich for a business was cut, just coming out of a bumper period. And clearly everybody's catching up in the online space. Everybody is becoming an online retailer. If you're not, you, you know, you're finished. Um, yeah. So it, you, you've had this dramatic fall. Sorry, I just want to quickly pick up on the point you mentioned about COVID, because I think this is highlighted, you say, about the fact that uh, all, all stocks dropped 
uh, when we saw the COVID lows just uh, after what was it, March 2020, it almost seems a long while ago now. Um, but at that point, then people started doing more and more online. And plus also, of course, the, the biotech companies as well, uh, which did so well. How do you feel about video games developers and, and these biotechs that have done so well? How do you feel about those going into 2022? I think well, you've, you've mentioned another sector, video gaming, very popular. Um, and I, I feel that they need, need to have more strings to their bow now. They, they, you know, they, they, they've, they proved themselves online. Everybody was on and nothing else to do. They're all, you know, become, everybody's becoming a video gamer. And, you know, earnings were great. Lots of money being channeled into that sector. But you, you, you can see now what, what, what's it going to be like sort of post lockdown? How, how's, how are things going to develop? What are they going to do? How are they going to? You know, you know, enlarge their offering, their platform. And Team 17, I draw, is one example. That's a business that did pretty well. The shares performed very well. Everybody loved it. Everybody loves the video gaming sector. Uh, we've had two takeovers from that sector. But Team 17 has decided to sort of expand beyond its core video gaming sort of history into so-called edutainment. It bought a business called Story Toys, which developed, is a developer and publisher of educational entertainment. And I, th I think it's an interesting move. It's the first of the, the AIM stocks to take that direction. And it'll be interesting to see if others follow suit, if they expand into, uh, into other sectors related. Because there is a bit of pressure around video gaming. Everybody's spending too long on it. Uh, the Chinese authorities are also clamping down on it. So we'll see how, uh, how that one evolves. But I think that's an interesting example of a business trading strongly, generating lots of cash, you know, not nice balanced offering. It's got lots of gains, but it's decided to move into another sector. Thoughts for 2022 again, expanding on that. Let's, you know, with COVID testing is now suddenly, you know, back on the agenda again. Everybody thought it would, we passed that. But here we have a, a company, and I think I brought one up here called Novasight, NCYT is the ticker. Massive success over, uh, in terms of share price return in 2020. And everybody thought, well, we won't need its services. PCR testing, it's a specialist in PCR testing. It flew out of the blocks, got, got a test out very, very quickly. It subsequently had pr problems with the UK or authorities who, who failed to recognize some of their orders. So it's in dispute, but bang, it, you know, it's foot fell. But now you've had this, this short term recovery because PCR testing is, is very much on the cards again. But Here's another company. What's it? What's the future? I mean, it's made big profits, lots of cash. It's cash rich. It needs it needs to reinvest for the future. It needs to have a strategy, and it's not quite clear yet what that might be. But it, it needs to use this windfall to good effect, and and rather than just be reliant on the on on a, on, a, on, a, on a PCR testing model. So it'll be interesting to see how it evolves. But again, one to look for evolving business i'm moving on to to themes around that we're, we're in another tricky period travel travel is another big theme um i feel that the travel companies those that can survive the strong could do pretty well in 2022 hopefully when we get out of this and one one, one company that's worth mentioning a big aim stock is jet is jet two um jet two well i mean you can see that from the chart huge sell-off initially um but it, it, it's sort of battened down the hatches. It's raised more money. It's it, importantly as well, and it's opening one here is that it's service offering to customers has been very good. It's been very supportive, flexible, uh, and people rate its service proposition highly. This is a leisure travel as well. It's focused towards the leisure sector, not business. Um, carrying people to, you know, relatively short, short haul destinations uh, across Europe. And, and it, it, I think it could be really well placed to, to deliver a strong recovery, given its sort of service offering. It's all back to customer service. And I think I think that could be an interesting recovery when, when we get out of the current problem. But clearly, for the time being, it's in a it's in a tough spot. But great balance sheet, loads of cash. It's very well placed to survive. Um, and it's its founder, despite selling down a small amount of shares, is still dominant, 30 percent plus equity stake in this business so the founder's got a, a lot at stake in what is a, a one billion pound business and uh, another sort of play on that much smaller so it's a big business another play on the recovery and travel which one to look for much smaller modestly valued this business is called ramsden's ticker is rfx it's largely a 
it's an alternative financial services. It's got a pawnbroking business in there. It's jewellery retail as well. And it, it, but it's got, it makes a lot of money out of foreign exchange. And clearly, when nobody's traveling, that, that business has been really whacked. Um, and when people do start traveling, again, it's, it's FX business could be um, a, a, a one, one to, to really rebound strongly. Slight doubt, will people be using as much cash as before? We're moving to increasingly to a cashless society, and this is all has been about cash, although they do have a, a foreign exchange card. But yeah, a, a nice valuation. It's very cheap, and it's it's online retail offering looks, looks pretty good as well. It's interesting actually Another talking thing, about uh, the, yeah. the use of cash and not the the idea of not having cash is something which we've we sort of dreamt about in the past, and it's now becoming a reality where we can see money moving around in the ether. One of the big things I know that I really wanted to talk to you about today was how the AIM market represents what is another new market that many are looking at. That's electric vehicles. Yeah, I think that's terrifically exciting, as you say. I think and AIM's got some really interesting companies in it. Um, We've there's one that's been on the market for a while. I mean, as you say, electric vehicles evolving very, very quickly. It's a sector that's is very, very dynamic. You've got you know Tesla, the big headline act there, but everybody's everybody wants a piece of it and has got to be doing something. And there's a there's a really exciting little company, a specialist engineering group on AIM. Uh, we've had shares in it for a long time now. Not just it's not long after uh, it IPO. It's been a big performer, slightly. Uh, sort of dribbled along lately, but a business called AB Dynamics, automotive testing company. It's got even some test facilities in the US now. It's been making acquisitions. It's got a lovely new factory down at Bradford on Avon, not far outside Bath. And it, it should be really well placed to benefit from this evolving sector, new vehicles coming out, new vehicles need testing, batteries as well, change the dynamics of a vehicle. And AB Dynamics is, is really well placed to support that. Its customers are all over the world. So really, that, that, that's one, one, most definitely one, one to watch. In the same sector, now AB Dynamics is mature, well-developed, it's been around for a while. In the same sector, it's tough to explain, there's a new arrival on, on AIM called Sieta Group, tickers SCD. And its shares have really, you know, really appealed, clearly, I, I, one can assume, to the private investor community because they're, they're pretty illiquid. You know, the shares have doubled, since, more than doubled since IPO, lifting its value to more than £200 million. And it is developed in an electric motor print, and it's principally addressing lightweight, uh, lightweight vehicles, notably mopeds, motorbikes uh, in emerging markets as well, which clearly could be a huge sector. But it's got this, it calls it, what does it call it? It's some... Um, Axial flux technology, and I don't, you know, I don't know too much about it, but it, it, it's clearly quite interesting. Its pre revenues are minuscule at the moment, and that's the business. You know, we've, the story looks great. The excitement's here. It's got to start delivering. It's got to start proving that yes, the story looks good, but can you actually start commercializing this this, this nifty technology into something more meaningful? But yeah, re re really exciting. If that works. That could be absolutely fabulous, and. It, you know, a great vote of confidence in AIM. So autumn EVs generally, electric vehicles, it is the place to be. And in terms of infrastructure, we've held a business called Nexus Infrastructure for a while. Nexus has got three divisions, typically any excess, um, three divisions. And most recently, it's something called something called, created something called eSmart Networks about three years ago. And as the name suggests, eSmart Networks is involved in uh, electric vehicle charging. So it is, is, is designing and installing, arranging installation of e EV charging, uh, which is going to be massive. And we've, the UK has made this commitment for EV electric vehicles when everything's got to be changed. You can imagine the infrastructure changes necessary to support that. And ne Nexus has already has demonstrated before, it's still run, uh, run by its founder, and they, they demonstrate another startup a triconnect business. So from from you know from modest beginnings, they've already grown another, you know, another of their divisions. So uh, I think it could be a very exciting one to watch. Unfortunately, it's got a bit of a, a laggard in a, a civil engineering bit. Uh, so people need to park that and focus really on the growth, which is which is this e-smart networks and offering, um, which which looks looks great. Exactly. I was going to say, if you could bring in another stock, I know that you've been looking at in the energy uh, transmission uh, transition area. 
Yeah, I mean, an energy transition, we're, you know, much much like a electric vehicles within this is, is evolving very, very quickly. And we've, there are two headline acts on AIM, both in the hydrogen uh, fuel cell space, but ITM Power and Ceres Power. Um, both companies, ITM, you, you can see, I mean, it's been a huge, huge performer and Ceres over, over recent, uh, recent you know, years. Uh, importantly, 2020, 2021. These, these are now two billion plus businesses with still modest revenues, but with a very bright outlook. I think we're at the point now with both these stocks, and these are very well followed by the whole investor community, but we're, we're at the point now with both these stocks that they've got to either grow into their current valuations or, or, or grow beyond them. Or can they really do both? They, the mo revenues are still relatively modest for both order books and pipelines and everything. The outlook looks very rosy, but can they really deliver on that at the operating level? And I very much hope they can, because it, it could be like none, another big, big, uh, you know, seal of approval for, for, for AIM and, uh, and you know, in the hydrogen economy, which, which is an exciting place to be. Both have, both have attracted investment from some very reputable industrial groups as well. Um, I'm talking about, it, sorry, if I could move on, talking yeah. about industrial groups, I'd like if I can to steer the conversation on to some, uh, well, I, I won't call them old tech necessarily, but they're certainly uh, in vogue and they do come from a, a history of having uh, supplied uh, goods to us over a number of years, uh, is the construction sector. And I know you've got a couple of stocks you've been watching uh, in that sector, at the moment, Breeden and also James Latham. Yeah, I think these are both interesting because... I mean, this is the other end of the excitement scale of, as you alluded to, of, of those other companies. And Breeden is a provider of aggregates, construction materials, huge protective moats. It's not, it's not, you know, there's no threat from overseas with this business. Their sites have got to be close to their customers. They're hauling heavy goods and um, heavy materials, sorry. And they're, they're very, you know, very well entrenched. They've got their own quarries uh, and they've got source of supply. Um, and given the spend on infrastructure across the board, um, construction ge generally, they, they're, they're, it could be a great one to follow. The shares have come off a bit. Um, big company, again, billion plus AIM company. Um, again, cement works, aggregates, um, uh, rail, roads. Good, good, one, good one to look at. Um, well established as well. And I sense that they... They, they made a, a big acquisition a few years ago. I sense they could start moving again. There might be more, more deals to be made in, in their space, but not thrilling, but it should, should deliver some decent growth over the coming years, in our opinion. Another one, um, perhaps one of the oldest companies on AIM, if, if, if not the stock market as a whole, with the roots going back to 1750s, is James Latham, uh, a, a supplier of timber. This is really an, an immaculate business. It, it reports clean numbers, rarely makes acquisition. When it does, it makes acquisitions from its own cash flow. So unfortunately, it never goes back to the stock market. It doesn't give much to its stockbrokers. Um, still very much family controlled. We sense a bit more excitement. The website looks a bit jazzier. Margins are good. Returns on equity are pretty good. But, but you, you should always, anybody looking at these, everybody's been excited about the construction and DIY, I mean, a repairs, renewals, remediation sector. You know, there have been a lot of listings in that space. The thing is, you often look at people, they adjust their numbers a lot. Latham's numbers are absolutely clean. So, you know, what you see is what you get. You, you're getting, you're getting you, if you, in terms of rating, it's much fairer than other people. So don't be put off if they look high. At least you're looking at the true figures of this business. It's not that liquid, 200 odd million market capitalization. But the shares aren't that liquid. But look, look at the it's delivered handsomely for shareholder, and you get you get a lovely dividend along the way as well. Um, but we sense a bit more excitement there, so worth keeping an eye on this very elderly, uh, elderly AIM company, most most definitely. Uh, support services. Well, yeah. I know another area you are into, and we've spoken about these two companies. I think before uh, something you've been uh, interested in a while. Uh, give some more detail on what you've got there. Got two, two businesses that we like. They're, pr they're pretty good, very dynamic, driven by very dynamic sort of founders, CEOs. And it's not the most thrilling of you know, support services, covers everything. But um, one of them is Elixir International, ELIX. Um, 
The CEO is extremely ambitious. It's worth listening to some of his uh, uh, presentations. It may put some off, uh, slightly crazy at times, but you know, worth, you've got to have ambition, haven't you? Um, they're a management consultancy growing fast in the US. They're, they're helping their clients transition to this new, new economy, new way of working, lots of technology focus, lots of um, digitalization of things. You can, you can see it's been a great performer, but hugely ambitious, thinks this is a multi-billion pound company. No doubt it'll probably come off the rails at some point. So word of warning, but up to now it's been impeccable uh, and worth keeping an eye on that one because you know, it's still, whilst it, it shot up, it's still minuscule. You know, you compare it and even the rating, if you can keep this growth going, the rating looks modest compared with, for example, the, the Accentures of this world on the on the US market. So, so interesting, interesting company, sort of partner model underneath, very well rewarded if they deliver, very, very, very aggressive uh, uh, in terms of supporting growth. So worth keeping an eye on that one. Another one, um, which has been on aim longer is K3 Capital Group. And K3 Capital Group, when it um, arrived on, on aim originally, it was very sort of very one dimensional. It was a mergers and acquisitions, corporate, sort of semi corporate finance boutique, boutique ha handled the sale and the buying and selling of smaller S, you know, SMEs. And it's, it's got more strings to its bow now. So it's, it's, it's very profitable, very high margins, but it's invested in other areas. It's, um, it's moved into, um, insolvency, business restructuring. It's even acquired a business involved in um, uh, R&D, you know, helping people get R on the R&D tax credit front. So lots of different strings, more, it's got a, acquired another business in the corporate finance space. So inter an interesting, terrific sales model, very marketing led, which is, which is essential. I think that's where a lot of businesses fall down. And so many companies have great ideas, they don't have the distribution or the marketing now to, to really deliver and make the most of the great ideas. Whereas K3 Capital is, is very much structured around a, a really great sales process, uh, um, which, which, is it, which is impressive. But another one to follow with, and, it, and as I say, let, less all about one type of discipline, which was M&A now, now nicely balanced. So businesses struggle, it's insolvency practices which should do quite well. Um, Move, Just returning briefly down. back to the energy space. Yes, okay, please do. Yeah, so on the, on the energy space, worth mentioning in terms of infrastructure, smart metering systems. Uh, you know, as we were talking about how the electric vehicles, but also energy storage, smart metering system, the name suggests it's a core of activities in metering, but it's also got, you know, it's also trying to expand into um, energy storage, carbon reduction assets. It, it's it's there's so much money going into this in the UK that you, you've really got to, got to ha have a have a piece of it and smart metering is a, a good a good way of doing it. Again, associated with this energy transition, another newer listing that people won't be familiar with is Enerac and Technologies, which is um, a few weeks ago the government announced more focus on heat pumps. And in Rakwa has has uh, some heat pump technology. It, it, it it's contracted to install uh, heat pump systems, and also has a, a special you know IP around some metering, which uh, which, which is, inter is is interesting as well. Clearly, it, you know, it hasn't got off to a great start. I didn't think the valuation looked too bad actually. We we don't hold this by the way, um, but I, I'm keeping a close eye on it. It'd be nice to see how it delivers starts to deliver and it and it, you could see that share price start to tick up because it's in, it could be in a bit of a sweet spot. Yeah, uh, moving on if we can very quickly, software businesses, um, what's what's up in the sector? Without even alluding software, I think it's gonna stay, in, everybody loves soft, great software, recurring revenues, high margins, everybody, great cash flow. Maybe two to look at in the healthcare sector, Craneware and Emis. Both businesses are, um, you know, you know, got well placed Kramer in the US healthcare sector, EMIS supplying into the NHS. EMIS valuation looks pretty modest to us. Got lots of data on patients now, anonymized as well. What can it do with that data? So, one, two to follow in software, most definitely. Um, last but not least, we cannot do this without talking about pet care. Pet care has been very, very popular. And pet, any, anybody corrected with the pet care sector should do pretty well. Um, CVS Group is one of the UK's largest veterinary services 
providers. It's really had a, done a great job over recent years, greater focus on organic growth. Uh, it's got a huge number of practices, probably start to see the acquisitions begin again a bit more in earnest. Uh, we didn't like it. There were, it was acquisition mania for a few days where you can see the things falling off, but nice offering. It's got an online and a dispensary as well. It's, you know, it's, it's across the spectrum. So CVS Group, I think, could still do very well. Billion pound plus company now, but still relatively small in the in the grand scheme of things, especially when you see the things in the US. Um, final one in healthcare, really, to, well, pet healthcare is Animal Care Group, much smaller animal pharmaceuticals, bit of a recovery play, and you can see it has recovered strongly. But um, there could be more more to come from this little business. And, um, uh, you know, def definitely one, one to keep an eye on. It's operating in very much in the market of giants, but, but yeah, well, definitely one to watch. Yeah, indeed, up against the likes of Decra Pharmaceutical, uh, one of the bigger players in the market. But, uh, look, Chris, thanks so much indeed for joining us. Uh, it's interesting always to talk to you to find out what it is you've got in your view. Uh, and looking at it 2022, clearly a lot of stocks to, to look out for. Thanks indeed for joining us. That's Chris Boxall, Portfolio Fund Manager uh, and a specialist in IHT stocks uh, from AIM. Uh, he is there with us from Fundamental Asset Management. For more videos from us here at IGTV, join us on Twitter at IGCom, Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel.